We've left the brothel behind, and we are uh, looking to uh, go and explore this area, try to find the um, the goofs that are messing with the uh, the brothel owner. Um, and as I mentioned before, as soon as I got out of here, uh, I saw this exciting purple shipwreck, and I want to go see what it's about. So let's let's check that out. Evidently, we have to run all the way around here to go and do that. A young boy's corpse lies at your feet, half covered in dirt and seaweed. His hands have stiffened around a dagger. A soul lingers nearby, confused and lost in the seaside fog. As you reach for the soul, it lashes out. Glowing mist strikes at the air around you. The soul can't touch you, but you feel it burn with a feeble, uncontrolled rage. Chill. The soul flickers. It ripples toward you, timidly at first. You experience wonder, fear, and joy of running between the ships at noon. With a jolt, it pulls you into the streets around the salty mast. Women with painted faces weave between men, stumbling in and out of the lamplight. Father's gone in for a drink, just like always. Somebody start playing the violin. He said he'd only be gone a few minutes, but it's been hours. The man guarding the door only laughed when he tried to explain. There's always a back door. In an alley, two men have cornered a woman. Her cheeks are streaked with tears. She's backed against the wall and looking away. They're inching closer. You step forward. The men barely acknowledge you, but that woman looks at you, a plea in her eyes. You've seen that eyes, that look in the eyes of abused strays, and your hollowborn sister, that time father took her from the splintering cradle to the filled wash basin. You were brave that day. A knife is in the thug's belt. It's in your hands. Now it's in his thigh. You're small and fast, but not fast enough. Fingers bite into your arm, and a muddy boot sails towards your face. Then everything is muffled by cold, brackish water. The soul retreats from you. It pulses with a question. You did a brave thing. The gods will reward you in the next life. I don't know if I believe that. You died. You did. Darren's soul absorbs the thought. And away he goes. I will take the dagger, though. Oh, I see. The dagger is a clue. Some kind of a clue dagger. Thug's dagger. All right. With a B in it. Okay, well, I guess we'll uh, we'll use that to figure out who killed that kid. Hopefully. Suppose we shall see. Okay, so there's a bunch of abandoned houses. There's a trading company. Um, I'm going to walk this way, uh, and we'll, we'll see uh, see what we find. Oh, thugs. Perfect. What have we here? Another tourist in the gift? Let's give her a proper welcome. Yeah, I don't think so. You, you jerks. Well, this, this is the last mistake they're ever going to make. Dummies. You're just like those assassins I fought earlier. Too stupid to know any better. Alright. Bet you didn't see this coming. Okay, so so can you imagine, like, alright, so you're fighting, you, you know, you're, you're a thug and you see some strangers and you're trying to rob them and, okay, you're a dick, obviously, but, like... <laughs> Okay, cool, let's rob these people. And then all of a sudden, fucking out of nowhere, dragons. Yeah, I bet you're regretting your life choices now, jerks. <laughs> Poor crammed in. Yeah. All right, here, let's hit this game with that spell. Hey, go. Aw, oh, down he goes. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, these guys, not exactly like difficult assailants to begin with, um, but still. 
Oh, the key. Rusty bronze key, huh? Alright, it's a house key. Perfect. You got any sailors? What's up? No? Nobody? <laughs> Just completely ignored the bloodshed and the dragons. Cool, I can get behind that. Alright, so... Where were we? Just a regular abandoned house. Hmm. Okay. I don't think it's this house because it wasn't locked. I'm metagaming. I'm metagaming really hard. <laughs> I need to find a house that has a, a locked door. Um, I think it might be this ramshackle one. Let's head down here and see. Your friend. What is it about Isselmir? I'm right here, you know. Oh, no, you're both great. It's just, well, I feel like I don't get to spend as much time with her, and she's just so funny. <laughs> Some of the things she says are not nearly as funny when you've been hearing them for 50 years. <laughs> Nobody likes Aloth. We all just like his little friend inside, his magic friend. Everybody likes Tony. Nobody likes Danny Torrance. There we go. Find and confront the thugs. Hello. You don't look like one of the knights. Can I help you with something? I'm here about trouble with the salty mast. Ordinary kith are angry. Should be that crooked Almawa toadying up with the nobles. Oh, really? Using the tragedy of Wadesman's legacy to line her pockets. She's no better than the Adrian overlords we drove out 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. People aren't here to say you got a good heart. Maya's made us only the rich can afford her establishment, but sits in the po Oh my god, this is, uh... <laughs> this is gentrification quest. Seriously, she hates her because she's gentrifying the district. <laughs> awesome. I've taken matters in her own hands, but she's the real criminal. Look, now you can attack the employer, but you hurt the employees. There's no point to this, is there? Tell Maya we'll leave her people alone. Yeah, and I need to go have a word with her. God's damn that son of a- Oh, cool. The angry one clenches her jaw and stares out toward the harbor with glittering golden eyes. Eventually sensing your presence, she turns her feathered head toward you. Wanna run a down-on-its-luck Valen Trading Company? If you have more than half a brain, you could really do something with it. While well, you're willing to clean up a few bloodstains. Enough silver and gold, you'd be surprised how well you clean up just about anything. True enough. Verzano's just lucky no one's had to pay him in steel these days. Sooner or later, his luck will run out. Later, dude. She seemed cool. I hope I run into her again. Chances are pretty good, given that she had her own portrait. Alright, let's finish up... Uh funny how uh, uh, assessing every NPC becomes totally normal when you uh, have played these games before and as soon as you notice someone has a, a screen or a, a portrait, you're like, oh, I wonder what class they are. And you start thinking about your party and like, oh, who can I replace? Alright. Let's have a quick conversation with this lady. Hello. I've talked to the ringleader. She's agreed to leave you alone. Well, that's a welcome surprise, and when we're celebrating, if you choose to have your fun, enjoy my special discount. <laughs> I'll wait by the bar with a glass of something that kills disease. Yeah, what can I do for a comely lass like yourself? Yes, yeah, right, I'm hot. 
I can't get a discount on Cyril. Oh, no, I can. Fancy you go with her? Special rate of 500. Hell yes. You'll find her quarters upstairs. Don't mind the burly fellows. Just make sure everyone has a good time. Well, to make sure everyone has a good time? Guards. Guards, I'm not having fun in here. Come on, buddy. <laughs> okay. Let's go have a word. A word with Cyril. I, I like that we're all allowed in. Even the dog. Powder almost hides the circles on her eyes. Rouge dusts her two prominent cheekbones. Despite it all, Cyril is beautiful. She favors you with a smile. She must have practiced and perfected. I'm here on a quest to restore a Glenfathen clan. Let me make you more comfortable. There's something I need to discuss with you. Just tell me what you like. It's extra if you want to bring someone else in, though. Your friend Thristwin sent me. He needs that medallion. So do I. I offered him half the money and he refused it. I'm sure he told you all about his broken clan. Did he also tell you I got him where he is today? Well, I don't care about that. I really, I'm sorry for him. I'm going to bet you anything that he lives better now than he did in I'm Glenfath. Worked a long time for a way out. I'm not giving it out just because of he's gotten nostalgic. So my character really only has the ability to threaten her, but I could offer to buy it. So, what are six thousand pans? If you got that kind of coin, I'll gladly help you spend it. Anguith and relics are worth a lot less secondhand. Fuck it. Please take this. It's always given me an edge around people that I'm done with that part of my life. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so it's like, oh cool, she's, wow, awesome. <laughs> Cyril's boon, plus two athletics, plus two constitution, plus two dexterity. She's made me a better adventurer. And that's why professionals All right, cool. So, I gave her some money, uh, and now she can she can be done with her stat boosting prostitution if she chooses to, and uh, now I can uh, I can go and resolve this quest. So back to the inn, Brackenbury. I mean, yeah, it was an inordinate amount of money for a you know a resolve ring. But, um, yeah, I don't mind. To Brackenbury. Hey, yeah, let's talk about sex in role playing games, shall we? So, um,. You've heard me talk about before, if you've seen um, the, any of the Hack Attack stuff, or you've watched Being Everything Else, or really listened to me talk about game design in general, um, you know that I think that if something is uh, important to a game, you should include mechanisms for it. So, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean you have to include literally mechanisms for everything that's important to a game, but if you want to encourage players to behave a certain way, then you want to mechanize that for them. Um, you know, give them a, an incentivization by way of uh, the game itself. So in this case, I'm incentivized. The game is saying uh, if you engage in a, this, this scene with these prostitutes, if you have sex with them for money, you get mechanical bonuses. So the game is encouraging you to interact with them in that way. Um, which is, I mean, really cool. Uh, because it, it I, I'll go back, right? And ostensibly, each of those different prostitutes has a different bonus to give me. Griffin thinks I should go back, too. And so it's saying, I don't want to, like, I don't want to put words in the mouth of the designers, but basically, in this setting, in, this, in the fiction of the game, it's saying that it is good for you to have sex with a professional sex worker. Like, it literally is saying that in the game, right? If I want to be more successful as an adventurer, 
having sex with a prostitute will make that easier for me. Which is interesting. The only other game I can think of that has direct mechanical um, sexual mechanisms, and this is what made me think of it, someone mentioned in chat, uh, is Apocalypse World. So in Apocalypse World, when two PCs have sex with either each other or with an NPC, um, they, uh, they affect them mechanically, and they're me mechanically affected. Um, so I, I think that's really cool. Uh, it's just a way to incur a specific behavior in gameplay. Um, and you can do it well, and you can do it poorly, and you can do it kind of neutrally, like this game does, where it's like, if you do that, you get a bonus. Something to think about. Kind of cool. It's not just sort of like, her, her, this happened. Welcome. You've given my people a gift we couldn't possibly repay. I'll do the best I can, though. This is everything I have. Keep it. You can use it to rebuild. I'm a goddamn superhero. The Shattering Spirit will sing of your kindness for generations to come. If you ever find yourself in Arglanfath, honor us with your visit. Oh, I know I will. I definitely will. Sure. I think that we're seeing, and, and I credit, um, honestly, I, I credit Bioware with this, but we're seeing so many more video games uh, that have sex as like a, sex and romance is a thing that happens in them. Like it's starting slowly to become like, more and more relevant in RPGs, and people come to expect it, right? Like, I, I kind of expect relationship stuff in this game, um, but, I mean, I haven't seen much of it yet. Like, you're building friendships with your, your companions, but uh, not necessarily, like, romantic ones. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Bi Bioware made that a, a real thing in games, and you see more and more of it uh, over time. And I think it's important. Like, you spend a lot of time in a game with characters... <laughs> I'm just going to close the door one second. Yeah, so the, the, the taboo of like characters having sex with each other uh, becomes less and less relevant uh, as time goes on, and I think that's really cool. Um, I also think that, I mean, you're going to see that Eventually, that there'll be games about relationships, right? They won't just be a side note for uh, for role playing games, um, and I think that's going to be really cool. Um, people take it more more seriously uh, over time. All right, let's continue some quests. So I wonder if I'm high enough level to do Raedric's hold now, because that guy told me to get lost. Cade Noir, The Endless Paths, Vision Cliffs. Oh yeah, let's let's finish this. Let's finish the final act. So let's go to Copperly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, dating Sims. Um, uh, Catherine uh, is an interesting example of a game about a relationship. Um, I think that that we're going to see more and more of these types of games uh, take clear prominence um, as uh, as time goes on, as people become more um, I don't know more open to the idea of games about that stuff. Okay, so let's let's see if we can find this. There she is, there's Lumdala. Statuesque woman has a gaze that could cut stone. She turns her chiseled cheekbones to the sky and favors with you, you with a look of acknowledgement. Her eyes shimmer under silvered eyeshadow and razor precise line of coal. Before you can speak, she throws her hand up in dramatic fashion. Acting. Good day, stranger. Autographs after the performance, please. 
Great art requires great concentration. Greatness is expected from the revel of the stars. Wondering if a woman named Cora is part of your group. She suddenly seems focused on the length of her finger. That's odd. I don't have time to coach every young amateur. Fine, I'm looking for Kendall. Apparently he joined your group. But you don't know him either. The Pallid Knight herself could walk into that bar. Oh, that's cool, Pallid Knight. The Pallid Knight herself could walk into the bar and he'd believe she was there to sit in his lap and listen to body stories. Perhaps she'd enjoy a body tale or two. It must get old gathering the dead and dying. I'm just analyzing the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. And the facts are one of us stinks, cheap, stinks of cheap ale and desperation. The other has a long and an illustrious career. Consider well, which is more a credible source. I... I can of her sort. Now you to be trusted. Yes, okay. Spirit Piani. Surely there's someone else you can talk to about all this. I'm but a humble actor. You're connected to three recent disappearances you claim to know nothing about. <laughs> uh, I almost feel like her performance is an act. Then what else do you expect me to say on the subject? If you'll excuse me, I have a performance to attend to. Get out of here. Such a liar. Ooh, let me in Lumdala's house. I know what's going on. All right. Where's Lumdala's house? There it is. Okay. Let's go see what, uh... Let's see what this guy has to say. You, I saw you with Lumdala by the amphitheater. Look, I don't know what your business is, but I want out of this mess. I just came by to grab my things. Just let me leave, all right? Uh, okay, chill. This opens the door behind you. There's a passage there leading down to a theater. It's easy for you to see for yourself. First time I ever met an actor didn't want his name on everything. Just leave. I promise nothing. <laughs> Alright, well. Investigate the hidden theater. Oh my god, she's got a dungeon under her house? Yeah, this is gonna be great. I'm sure whatever's down here is gonna be just fantastic. A simple silken scarf crumpled on the filthy flagstones. This, this game really likes alliteration. Simple silken scarf, filthy flagstones. Essence radiates from it like heat, and the closer you get, the more you feel a confusing mixture of joy, surprise, and pain. Purple. You hold the scarf and focus on it. The world around you shifts. Something about your sh about you shifts, too. I've, I've done this like a hundred times. The smooth fabric is still in your hand, but you're a small yet cozy house, and Laura is looking from the scarf, asking if you like it. She's smiling because the answer is written on your face. That was four years ago. You still wear the scarf on days like today. After all, you wore it that first day you met the actress with the silver eyes. Who's to say it won't bring you luck again tonight? It's nestled around your throat, soft, warm, and comforting. Am I going to get strangled by it? You're halfway through the third act, and you can feel the audience's eyes on you. You were nervous at first when she brought you down here and wondered what kind of... I get it. It's like a weird snuff theater. Gross. You reach the end of your monologue, and the scarf tightens around your neck. It chokes the final line from your throat, which is embarrassing because your debut is going so well. But when you try to pull the scarf away, it tightens further. You're confused and look to the audience, expecting someone to rush to your rescue. Then you see their eyes. That hungry, attentive look and you understand. The stage fades to black. Scarf says. The scarf falls from your head and flutters to the ground, but Cora's soul lingers, stuck between a familiar token and a question. It wants to know, but it wants to retreat. You've had your sister's love and the courage to follow your dreams. Take comfort in that as you find your way to your next life. The soul glows with warmth before fading back into the fabric of the scarf. Lumdala emerges from the shadows with some tough dudes. 
Well, well, if it isn't our friend from Dunward Row. What do you want? I have a proposition. Oh, hell no. Stage my performance for certain wealthy patrons. One in particular would make a valuable catch. If you agree to a truce, I'll give you his name. Explain why this is a better deal for me. Think of it this way. I only feed a demand. I'm offering you the man whose money and connections made my performance as possible in the first place. Aha. Uh -huh. So do you go after the supplier, or do you go after the, the big deal, like, head dude? I need time. Fine, I'll do it. Excellent. The man you're looking for is Lord Gateman. Find him in Brackenbury yourself or report him to the authorities. Makes no difference to me. <laughs> God, I'm so evil. <laughs> uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> now, it's time we made our exit. Thanks for making a deal with us. How about instead I just fuck up your shit? That sounds like a good plan to me. Guess what? Adventurers lie. Yeah. Plus I'm all hopped up on prostitute energy. You know who goes back on their word? This guy. Following your lead. How may I help? What? <laughs> Actor. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she really shouldn't have told me the name of the person that I needed to find until after I had, like, let her go. Because honestly, like, come on, that's a mistake. You can't believe in me. I'm an adventurer. Can we, can we get some heals going here? This guy's gonna die. Come on, Aloth, don't... Don't eat it, please. He's so fragile. Huh? I guess it's also there's a bunch of guys attacking him. character. Fine. I'm gonna be shitty about it. Can I summon dragons and skeletons at the same time? I better be able to. It make me sad if I can't. Oh, I totally can't. That's so silly. There we go. Let's get them. That's what you get for trusting me. Don't you know? I'm a PC. You fools. That is a kick-ass ring. Uh, let's take a look at it. Fortitude, reflex, and will. Uh, I know who I'm going to give that to. Here, sucker. Put that on. Stop dying. Good boy. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, like they say in Shadowrun, right? Like, shoot straight, conserve ammo, and never make a deal with a player character. That's how that goes, isn't it? It must be. <laughs> well, hey, let's rob her whole house while we're here. What else you got? 
Your life is forfeit. Why not? Taking all your shit. Looting frenzy. You're not gonna need it in the grave. Look, I don't need. <laughs> All right. Yeah, living that murder hobo life. Straight thugs. I wonder if I can assemble the group a little better around these characters. No, they kind of, kind of already are. Like, it's sort of the best I can do. I guess I was on point. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. All right, so Slulum Dalla. I'm gonna go talk to. Um, I'm gonna go to the what's her face's house and let him know about that action. Also, my dude um, Durance is all beat on. Here, let's let's go to the inn and rest first. Though I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my prostitute bonus. You must gather your part. I want to lose my prostitute bonus. <laughs> Come on, Durance, catch up, man, catch up. You can do it. Yeah. There we go. All right. So let's go and talk to Bishop. Yeah, see if we can get a room. I would like a perception room. Thank you. <laughs> it's like the laziest dream sequence ever. <laughs> Wonder. I think my problem before was that I got. Maybe they're too clustered together. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's try that. Or maybe uh, I'm gonna put. I guess if I had like a pike or something that I could give this guy he'd be better for a second row because you can you can get quite custom with these i guess that's cool all right so i'm going back to brackenbury to turn that quest in Ah oh, well, my. Nope. Is it very cold? What creatures wander the tundra? How are your leaders chosen? Do you always ask this many questions? Well, that's just to get us started. Uh, let me get out some parchment for notes. Ask whatever you want. If I don't know, I'll make something up. I just realized what the the weird voice that Kana is doing reminds me of. He sounds like Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's totally who he sounds like. That's really funny. I'm not going to be able to unhear that now. <laughs> Hail, traveler. Here we go. A lot, actually. A woman named Lumdala has been staging performances in which actors are murdered. Lord Gaterman is one of her most promised patrons. It's big, I knew it. Things got messy, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, well. Your shrewdness helped us resolve a troublesome case and save many lives. 
Something else. Limdal had an associate named Kadal. But he, I wouldn't have been able to do it without his help. Mm, should I turn him in? I'm not going to turn him in. It was worth it to put a stop to these heinous crimes. Appreciate your zeal. Take this as payment. Thank you for your generosity. You're welcome. I'm the best. All right. Well, that feels good. Resolving your quest, doing a thing. How's my uh, how's my dungeon coming along? How oh, my main keep? Two hours. Okay. All right. What's next on the old quest log here? So the records archive. I need to get my reputation up. Let's go to Radrix Hold. Let's head that direction. Let's see if I'm ready to go and confront the noble lord. So where was Redrick's hold again? It was um, here, I think. <laughs> Some random deer running by. Okay, let's buy some more things. Purchase a barracks. Yeah, this is the right road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hmm. To Redrick's hold. Tired and sad. Fine. I need to get Durance some endurance. There are accounts of watchers in all of the regions I've visited. If the adventuring life doesn't work out for you, you could always read souls for coin, give people advice, tell them which family they're related to and whom they should duel for past offenses. Just shut him down. It's a yeah. funny jerk. This is the home of the man responsible for those hanging corpses. You don't plan on knocking, do you? Yeah, I plan on knocking his face in. That's right. Oh, what's this business? Examine the wall. Endurance begins to lag behind, fatigued, just like he was earlier. Hey, we snuck into the castle. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's sneak around in the castle and see what's up. Yeah, I'm stealing your armor. So, Raider guards. Knock him. <laughs> Merciless. I guess we're just going to end up having to kill everybody. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the siege equipment to get, like, through the front door, but hey, I'm in the castle now, so... Yes, yeah, I really I guess I'm just killing everybody. Priests, After paladins, whatever they got. Eh? Stop shooting me with arrows. Stop it.
These guys don't seem so tough. Oh, look at all this full plate armor. How am I carrying that around? All right, in we go. Baratheon priest robes. Had some Baratheon robes. They may help me blend in with the priests on this floor. Yeah, do I want to blend in? I don't know. I don't know if I want to. I feel like blending in is not a thing I care about. Yeah, no. Let's just... Just gonna keep doing what we're doing. High priest, eh? The high priest of instant gibbing. <laughs> I feel a little OP for this area. Um, I don't know. Maybe the real, maybe the real monsters are coming up, or maybe I should have done this earlier. I was just so intimidated by that guy. <laughs> Ooh, something. Ah, uh, hidden drawer. I got your gift. I can't believe someone actually wrote that kind of thing on parchment. I left something for you in the chapel. Can I not to go digging in the wrong skull again? Alright, chapel, skull. There's a gift. Barath. Kind of death god. Yup. <laughs> I can't even imagine, like, you're just hanging out, being a priest or an acolyte or whatever, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, 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 the whole house is just like a roar with violence and bloodshed as these adventurers bust in and just start throwing spells around at everybody. Kind of intense. <laughs> I'd say it's time to get a campfire going and let's sleep for a while. I'd say you're a wimp. We're pushing on. Yes. What? How may I help? Let's go. Eh? Just murder all of them. Yeah. There we go. What happened to this priestess? Oh, she's in sanctuary mode. Satisfying. Nice, efficient looting. Some skulls here. Anything else on this floor? Yeah, there is, yeah. There we go. This might be a challenge. Yeah. Hey. Following your lead. Oh, 
I like the visual effects in this. The spells look really cool. That's one way uh, that this game has the advantage over Baldur's Gate. It was built in an age where we could have particle effects and bloom lighting and what have you. Yes, I will take everything. Twice. To the siege platform. Tense. Mm, cooking ingredients. Delightful. Eh? Let's go to the siege platform and take a look around. Okay, this is just where I was before. Temple storage, two temple. Anything else up on here? They're all prepared for a siege, but what they weren't prepared for was a single fighter armed with proton torpedoes. I mean, player character armed with being a player character. Why is there 200 copper in this barrel? Well, I am just kept up on goofballs here, just like rampaging through this castle. This is what you get for making enemies of a PC. Wow, cool crypt. Oh, they have ghouls in their house crypt. That makes me nervous. He keeps suggesting the most inappropriate places. <laughs> okay, fine. Now we'll camp. How restful. All right. Well, as my uh, as my characters rest, so too shall I. Let's take a short break. And we'll come back in uh, just a few minutes with uh, another hour of Pillars of Eternity. So uh, stick around, and we'll be right back.